So today I want to say something about knots. So this is really for fun, but also it'll be good for practicing various skills we've learned about matrices. So mathematically speaking, what is a knot? Um, well, if you take a piece of string and then you tangle it up anyhow you like, um, I guess we'll assume we can only uh, do something with it finitely many times. So we're assuming it can't have infinite number of intersections. Um, so every time I've drawn it to break, that means it passes under where it's unbroken. So here, this bit is the thing that's passing over. And uh, notice it's closed up. So um, for a mathematician, this is a knot because it's closed. This is just a piece of string which isn't closed. So this is not a knot. So something like... Um, Yeah, something like this is not a knot because the two ends here are free. If we join them together, that would turn it into a knot. But of course, joined together, this is not a very interesting knot because it can be unraveled to give us just a circle, which is called the unknot. Okay, so what are we going to do with knots then? Well, the simplest um, knot that isn't an unknot is called the trefoil knot. So the trefoil knot looks something like this. Okay, so we can see it has three crossings, three places where part of it crosses over a different part of it. And those three crossings are here, here, and here. So this is called the trefoil knot. And, um, we're going to orient the trefoil knots, and that means we're going to travel around it in a certain direction. We're going to choose a direction of travel. Um, so let's decide to go this way around. So just following around with my finger, I can see um, it doesn't matter which way you choose, but probably it'll be easier for now if you choose the same orientation I have. Um, but equally, you can choose the other one and it'll still work out okay. And these three crossings we talked about before, I'm going to call a... Uh, no, I won't call that one A. Uh, maybe I'll call this one A, B, and C. And then in my diagram I've drawn here on the screen... Notice I had to draw three different arcs in black with the pen. So I'm going to call those arcs number one, number two, and number three. And um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a matrix. And each time I have a crossing like this, where I have the overpassing pointing in this direction, whichever arc the overpassing is, we're going to associate to that a sign of 1 minus t. And then moving around um, uh, anti-clockwise, this, whatever arc this is here, that will get a sign of minus 1, and whatever this arc is, that will get a sign of t. And then... I'm going to collect in a matrix called the Alexander matrix, named after a mathematician called James Alexander. Um, we're going to have three rows corresponding to the three crossings A, B, and C, and then the arcs, one, two, and three, and we'll put the entries, so that the entries are going to be either the T, the one minus T, or the minus one, depending on what happens at each crossing. So if we look at the crossing A a bit more closely, we have the crossing A in blue, and then we have the crossing B here, and then we have the cross the arc C here. Sorry, A, B, and C are uh, arcs. So we can see the 1 minus T, that's going to be... Um, oh, sorry, no. A is... Sorry. Um, a 
is A, B, and C are the crossings, the arcs I've called 1, 2, and 3. So this overpassing is the arc number 1, this is the arc number 2, and this is the arc number 3. So with 1, we're going to have the 1 minus t. With 2, we're going to have minus 1, and with 3, we're going to have t. Now let's look at arc B. Oh, sorry, crossing B. <laughs> Um, so at crossing B, we can see we've got an overpassing like this, which is arc number 2. So that's telling us a 1 minus t goes at 2. And then we have arc number 1 and arc number 3. If we rotate this a little bit, so it's like this, we can see that the 3 is what goes with minus 1. And then for the final arc, I'll do it in green. So um, for arc, sorry, for the final crossing, crossing C, we have this. So this is arc three here. This is arc one. This is arc two. Again, if we rotate it around, then we can see that the one this time is what gets a minus one. The three gets a one minus T and the two gets a T. Okay, so this matrix, uh, this 3 by 3 matrix is called the Alexander matrix. Um, and then, next step, um, I'm just going to get rid of some of the working that we don't really need anymore. Okay, uh, next step, so step 1 is basically um, form the... Alexander matrix using this and then step two delete any row one row and any column uh, if I call the Alexander matrix A if I call this matrix capital A uh, then we'll say delete any row and column from A um, call the new matrix, let's say, A prime. And then step three, the Alexander polynomial of the knot K, uh, denoted by delta K T, T is the variable, it's a polynomial in the variable T, is the determinant of a prime. Um, so let's see for the trefoil then. So first of all, what's a prime? Well, we can choose any row and column to delete. It doesn't matter which. So maybe if I choose 3 and C to get rid of, I'm just left with this 2 by 2 minor to work out. So all I have to do so my 2 by 2 matrix A prime is 1 minus t, minus 1, t, 1 minus t. And then the Alexander polynomial is the determinant of A prime. And then that's quite easy. That's a 2 by 2 determinant. So it's just 1 minus t squared plus t. Or t squared minus t plus 1. And we're done. That's the Alexander polynomial of the trefoil knot. So this is where k is the trefoil. Um, maybe we'll just say an important warning is that uh, the Alexander polynomial uh, can vary by uh, plus or minus powers of t. What I mean by that is if you were to choose a different, di a different diagram for it, or a different orientation, you might get minus this, or you might get this thing divided or multiplied by a power of t. So t times this, or for example, t to the minus 5, or minus t to the minus 5 times this, would, are also the Alexander polynomials of the trefoil knot which you might find strange, especially considering in the normal sense of the word, this second one is not even a polynomial, because polynomials no normally don't have negative powers of the variable. 
but it's really what's called a Laurent polynomial, which means it can have negative powers of t. Okay, let's uh, let's move on then. So here's another one, and you can try doing this one for yourself. So this time I'm going to show you something that isn't a knot. This is a link. Um, I think this is called the whitehead link. So we're going to take two strands like this, and they're linked around each other in this fashion. And then uh, this one is oriented in this direction, and the other one is oriented in this direction. Um, that's just a choice I've made. You can choose a different orientation if you desire. But you might get something, as I said, that varies by a power of t, or the sign might be opposite. Um, and let's, let's go ahead and label the crossings. Let's uh, label the crossings a, b, c, d. And let's label our arcs. Let's call this arc over here um, one, this one number two, this one number three, and this one number four. And then let's, uh, let's remember in a crossing, this gets sign one minus t, this is minus one, this is t. And then let's form the Alexander uh, matrix A. And actually, so, um, yeah, so we have the arcs one, two, three, and four and the crossings A, B, C, and D. And in fact, we can delete a row or column, so really the last one we're not going to have to worry about. So let's just look at the crossing A then. So the overpassing is 1 minus T, which I'm going to delete anyway, but it would go there. And then uh, the arc 1 is the thing that gets a minus 1. And the arc... Um, 3 is the thing that gets a t, and then we give a 2 gets a 0 because it's not involved in crossing a. And then crossing b, 1 is the overpassing, so we've got a 1 minus t. Um, and then 2 is the thing that gets a minus 1. Uh, 4 is the thing that gets a t, but we're going to delete that, so 3 gets a 0. And in crossing c, 2 is the overpassing. Uh, 3 is the thing that gets a minus 1, 1 is the thing that gets a t, and we have a 0. And then the, the other one we don't need to worry about. So then our matrix A prime, with a row and column deleted, is going to be this. And then the Alexander polynomial of this link, so if I call this link L, um, the Alexander polynomial is the determinant of a prime. So we just need to do this 3 by 3 determinant. So um, we can choose a row or column. Let's just choose the top row. So we get minus 1 times minus 1, 0, 1 minus t minus 1, plus t, 1 minus t, 1 minus t minus 1 t which is minus 1 times 1, that's minus 1, plus t, times 1 minus t squared, plus t. And then we're going to get uh, minus 1 plus t times, let's see, uh, t squared minus t plus 1. So that's the same as t cubed minus t squared plus t minus 1. And that's the answer. And again, if you want to make it, um, you might find if you do it differently, you don't get quite this, you might get minus this, or you might get this divided by t or something like that. Uh, but this is the Alexander polynomial of that link. And then I'll, I'll just leave you with one to have a go at. So this, this knot below that I'm going to draw is called the three twist knot. Um, so it looks, uh, let me see if I can draw it carefully. So there's one strand that's something like that. 
and then I think that's right. Um, yes. So this one has five crossings. So you can label it how, however you like. Um, maybe suggested labeling, let's call this arc one. This one two. So two would be this one here. This one three. This one four. And this one over here five. And then let's choose an orientation. Again, it really doesn't matter, but let's go this way. And then you can follow it round with your finger to see where uh, to maybe draw some more arrows to help you. And then let's look at the crossings, maybe A, B, C, D, E. And then you can generate your Alexander matrix. You can ignore one of the crossings, whichever one you don't like, maybe E. And you can also ignore an arc because you're going to delete a, a column as well. And then you'll form the, the four by four matrix A prime, and then you'll work out its determinant. So this is one for you to have a go at. And then to show you the answer, or um, yeah, so here's the matrix A prime with uh, crossing E and arc five deleted, and then the determinant um, if we expand along, say, the first column, then we get minus 1 times the 3 by 3 minor here, and then minus t times the 3 by 3 minor here. And that's using the adjusted plus minus plus for a 4 by 4 matrix. And then, yeah, and then we just have two 3 by 3 determinants to work out and I made it 2t cubed minus 3t squared plus 2t. Or if you prefer to write it differently, you could write it like this. Um, obviously, these are not the same thing, but up to this equivalence that's allowed for Alexander polynomials, they're considered to be the same Alexander polynomial.